How's it going out there, Niner fans? It's B5 alongside Mr. Larry Lombard. How you doing, Larry? Hey, I'm excited to be here because this is a critical week in putting the pieces together for the Niners. Uh, you know, insofar as the free agency and 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 all the choices they have to make to keep the critical components on the team. So it's it's exciting, but it makes me a little nervous. <laughs> It's a lot of mix and match going on right now, and you should be. This is really going to define the upcoming year, and, and we're going to see the directions and what we value because when you ink those contracts, you make statements. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk about a couple signings today. We're going to talk about Juice. Juice is back, and then we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the Corvette. Uh, but first, uh, let me go ahead and let you know that Larry and I, we teamed up with Fanatics to connect you Niners News Network viewers. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the best selection of officially licensed 49er fan gear out there. So if you purchase through our link, uh, we make a little commission and keep the lights on. So I bought this hat and this shirt, and it came in this nice little bundle with the rubber band around it. So the hat was already, and the brim was already curved. And uh, it was 20 bucks, people. Nice shirt, nice hat, 20 bucks. And uh, if you like it, you want to get your own, your own size, just click the link in the description box and help out Niners News Network. So let's get to the important stuff. Uh, Juice is back 27 million, five years in a team friendly contract that has no guaranteed money. Tell me how much of a team player that is, Mr. Lombard. This was a signing that the Niners had to make because he's absolutely one of my favorite players on the team. What he brings to the team is not always shown in the PFF, in the stats, in the lines. It doesn't always show the contribution he makes on offense and just and just bring the energy of the team up is it's one of the intangibles that makes him a must sign. That's why I was so excited. The man's a Mack truck when he gets in the open field. Uh, ask uh, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick about what you know what it's like to try to sure. stop this man in the open field. That guy is still you know nursing his wounds after that, right? <laughs> And uh, and then uh, when he is not on the receiving end of the ball, what he does in the open field block is absolutely insane. The man will lay out uh, the, the guy on the other side of the ball. It's just absolutely a, a thing of leadership beauty. in in on and off the field. Um, you know the the Harvard connection. Just just everything about Juice is is very Tom Rathman. And for those of you candlestick generation, Tom yeah. Rathman was a fullback, much like Juice, led us to four Super Bowls. Uh, not many people have a fullback on their team, which is why it's interesting that they're limited in pay. Now we see two contracts um, in two years, George Kittle last year, who's mm -hmm. limited because he's not a wide receiver, so we get to pay less. And now we see an H back or fullback in a West Coast offense that's getting paid 27 million, and that's by far and away the most paid fullback in the league. So, um, but we're glad he's back because he really is the culture, and I don't want to give up any culture. There are some guys I don't want to lose but I can't afford to lose any culture and juice is super cool. When he tweeted that his strength coach went to the jets, do you see how many people said, don't go on that Twitter thread? Absolutely. People are getting really, really scared about that because they think, Oh God, Oh God, don't lose this guy, you know, but, but you're, you're right about that. And you know what, while we're on the subject of culture, B five, we've got George Kittle. It's another Absolute. Although this one obviously gets the respect he deserves as the best tight end in the league, but uh, they both bring a culture to the team that is irreplaceable. Uh, I don't think Juice gets enough credit, but we certainly do. But he doesn't get the obviously the star-studded red carpet kind of treatment like the, like George Kittle does deservedly. Just from the fan and television side, I believe yeah. if you keep your eyes on the TV, and I've actually seen this factually because i promise people facts right mm -hmm. that there's there's trainers and coaches and players are going nuts when juice does the the flying forearm or the choke slam or you know whatever he does that's that's so um amazing like you said in the open field so i really i really think the bulk of the effect for juice does not hit the fans or the tv level I think those intangibles, again, are because of the separation as fans. We might experience something different at Levi's. But let's digress yeah. and talk about mm. the 
an interesting contract to another interesting contract. Okay. Juice takes five years, no guaranteed. Now we find out that the Corvette only takes one year, 5 million over a three-year contract. Why do you suppose that Jason would not take a three-year contract? The man is, is feeling his worth, you know, uh, he, we, we know what he was able, you know, when he's healthy, he's, he's one of the league's best cover corners. I know he gets injured a lot, but they talked about it all the time when he was on the charges, he was a lockdown. I, I saw some video of him on Antonio Brown. The man was sticky, you know? So yeah, I know the injury bug bites him, but he is quality and the Niners needed to retain him. I was singing his praises. We were calling him the corporate, the whole, yeah. uh, you know, 2020. And, you know, I know the season may not have turned out on a record level no, where we wanted it. would it. have been a lot worse. I mean, if, if Niner fans go back, we can remember a name, Antonio Langham. I used to call him burnt toast because oh, yeah. I always see him in the end zone, five yards away from the guy who scored the touchdown. Verrett really gave us a chance to still be fans with respect at the end of the season. And I hope we get a chance to, to reach out and thank him because we are definitely, you know, fanatic about the Niners. And when the chips were down, he didn't lose his cool. That's why I believe he'll be useful in a playoff or Super Bowl scenario where we hope to be next year. Yeah, sure. Well, we'd like to have had him for the three years, of course, but you know, it's, it's uh, people feel their worth and I respect them for that. The man, when he's playing and he's healthy, he's really, really top notch. And the, with, with his signing and then E-Man, you know, Emmanuel Mosley signing, now we've got our starting corners. And that's so important when you go into a year, you do not want to lose, uh, you know, your, your DBs. You don't want to be putting a bunch of new pieces in and have to have uh, Shanahan and the, and, and everyone else figure out, you know, how, how do I slide these pieces in? They don't have experience. They don't have that that communication you have with an established crew, well, you know, that, I'd like to point something out you know. to you that you may be overlooking with your, your uh, you know, your years have gone on and, and sometimes you forget things and you may have forgotten that D'Amico Ryans is now the defensive coordinator. And I want you to pay attention to the fact that nobody's deserting ship. Nobody's going to the jets in a system they already know they're willing to learn a new system. So you know what I haven't forgotten B5. Ryan's. Do you know what I haven't forgotten B5? How much I hate having you on this team sometime just be you know your mouth. That's what I haven't forgotten. So I guess the I guess the you know the memory loss isn't as advanced as you thought cuz I haven't forgotten that thing. But go on. You had a point, I think. The 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 point was that um I, I as I'm trying to respect my elders but I slip from time to time. Um you're right. Ain't no spring we, chicken, buddy. We we need but go on. some defensive backs for sure. And mm -hmm. uh, to see them not jump ship with Saleh to the Jets in a system that they were comfortable in. Um, you know, but we'll, we have one more day to find out when the rubber really hits the road, when free agency starts, I believe, tomorrow. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, the storm clouds are rolling in, but at least we locked up a few people and quality people, juice and, and, and the Corvette and, well, you know, another move too. we got our center. Who's never going to play again. He, we convinced him somehow to restructure his contracts to get another 8 million. And yeah. wherever that came from, that's brilliant work because who wants to give up 8 million at the end of their career? Somebody, there's some real culture, Eddie D type principles being used again, because I think the Mike Shanahan contingent, which is completely unseen to the fan eye is definitely in Santa Clara for sure. Well, you know, uh, you have to get creative uh, at the end here, because again, we still got the, the big elephant in the room that everyone's worried about. Can we keep Trent? Can we keep Trent? Paying you know, Trent is like paying rent. That's, you know, I've saw that and I won't take credit for it, but I absolutely love it. Yeah. Keeping trend is like paying rent. You've got Kittle, you've got juice. Now you, you grab, 
big man and you have an instant Super Bowl running game. And I I did see that there was I want to give credit to the person, but I can't remember who it is. Uh, when I do the video, I'll, I'll put it on the screen. Um, they said that maybe if we don't keep Trent for some reason, that investing in an all star center, evidently there's a center available uh, name starts with a or something that we could go that direction. Um, but if we're going in that direction, again, that points us towards Deshaun Watson. And yesterday we talked to our common sense analytics department. They said the best thing I've ever heard. It sounds to me that this is what they said. It sounds to me like Shanahan and Lynch don't know which quarterback they want. And I actually have to agree with that. Your thoughts. The common sense analytic department. So, so he's, He's leaning towards Watson as an acquisition or, or he's Doesn't thinking that they there's, want. they don't know what they want. They don't know what they want. You know, don't you know don't, what they want. who it's, wants wishy-washy? Well, you mess up a quarterback. It's a pretty harsh, uh, it's, it's, it's lashings at, you know, on the center mass when you screw up a quarterback. So do you take a chance or do you just grab Watson and make sure you do it right? So now, here's, here's the choice. You're hearing Trubisky rumors now. You're hearing all kinds of stuff. And it's just, it's just, I'm watching the 49er Twitter and they're, they're pulling their hair out, you know? Yeah. It's like, come on. Well, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get out of here. Thanks again. Thanks to you, Larry. Thanks to Fanatics for uh, giving us a chance to make some money around here. Um, so click that link below, get your t-shirt, get your hat. Um, and enjoy yourself. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking with you guys again soon. Larry, get us out of here. Uh, my, my thing cut off. Well, just do the audio version. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't have that scripting though. The Larry get us out of here. No, oh. I just need two words. Oh, Hey B five. It's been great. Uh, I'm going to catch you again on the next one. No, still haven't heard the two words. Oh, start Lombard out. out.